Mortal, I have something to show you. In an instant, I was no longer in my basement, doing a load of laundry. My vision swirled before me, blurring the washing machine and dryer into a distorted vortex of colors, mainly the shade of white that exists only on home appliances, and the color of basement shadows mixed with cobwebs. The vortex span faster and faster, and new colors entered the display. Whites, grays, and dark browns turned to light sand and vibrant orange. The kaleidoscope slowed down until, after what felt like a dizzying age, reality was once again stationary and whole. I blinked repeatedly, scarcely believing what I was seeing. I was standing on what felt like desert ground, similar to the terrain found in the American Southwest. It was devoid of all shrubs and plant life. The ground was flat for miles on either side of me, and when I looked behind, I saw the sun just as it was touching the top of a mountain's peak about to set. I gazed at that horizon for a moment before returning to look at what was in front of me. I never saw a proper sandstorm in my life but the word perfectly describes what was in front of me. A storm of sand. It was everywhere, rushing in currents through the air. The sand glowed with an amber hue to it, emphasized by the rays of the setting sun. In places, the light made it look almost molten. The currents of sand wound themselves into writhing, energetic shapes. Cyclones of sand formed from the surface of the ground, reaching hundreds, maybe even thousands of feet up into the sky. Ripples cascaded across the storm's front, like ripples in a pond caused by raindrops. Strange shapes of highlighted and orange sand formed, almost reminiscent of things alive, like the distorted faces we see in the shadows cast by everyday objects when the night is dark and we are alone. In fact, several of the distorted shapes were uncannily similar to faces I dimly remembered imagining when I looked at the basket of unfolded laundry in my bedroom back home. They were a macabre trio. One was a face I imagined belonging to a somber gargoyle grimly sitting its vigil atop the buttresses of some hateful anti-cathedral in a darker world. The second was abject terror, a face caught forever in a frozen screen, with a mouth too large to look at any longer than a few seconds. Nietzsche's words of the abyss come to mind. The third could only have been the smirking visage of a prideful conqueror king in the land of ghouls and ghasts, whose names must never be spoken more than twice in a day. These three, and countless others like them, writhed and slithered in the wall of fiery sand. The wall went for miles in either direction. I noted that the edge of the storm was probably only 100 yards away from me. My stomach clenched in fear. If that wall of sand should reach me. I felt a presence on my left, but as I turned my head to see who or what was there, I found I could not complete the motion. My head was caught in an immovable grip. Then I heard the voice from before. Do not gaze upon me, mortal. Behold that which I have brought you to witness. W what is it? I asked. Hold your questions. Now see this. My eyes moved to the storm again. The faces in the sand were coming closer. I cried out in terror, and as I did so, for the first time, I heard the storm. The sound of it was an auditory onslaught like nothing I ever heard before or again. Imagine 
imagine the densest, hardest rain you've been in. Multiply it by three. Add constant, unrelenting thunder. And finally, once you've accomplished that, change out the raindrops for bits of gravel. It was deafening. I couldn't think. My vision blurred. My knees buckled. I would have fallen over, but the force holding my head in place was also keeping me up. The voice spoke again. Now quieter. The sound faded to a roar I could think over, and I could see and hear again. Figures appeared on either side of me, rushing forward into the amber sandstorm. They looked like firefighters. They wore heavy jackets, helmets, and gas masks. They carried packs on their backs that connected to some sort of hose that they held before them. I saw jets of glowing green vapor shoot from the nozzles of the hoses and toward the glowing orange storm. Sand and vapor collided in midair. Where they did so, both vanished in a small puff replaced with black ash that fell to the ground. The winds of the storm pulled the ash back into the clouds of sand, leaving bare desert soil behind. Some of the vapor hit the faces in the storm. They seemed to grimace or groan in pain, though I could hear no emission of sound. Parts of their grinning visages turned to ash like the other currents of sand. Wherever the wall was hit by the green vapor jets, the storm stopped advancing and retreated back over the desert. The line of storm fighters advanced with it. They kept walking forward and spraying jets of the glowing green vapor. Several of them suddenly stopped and turned back toward me running at a full sprint. Trickles of vapor swirled from the tips of their hoses. They were out of fuel, or whatever it was that fueled the vapor. The storm where they had been keeping it at bay redoubled its earlier trek forward, the faces within seeming to light up with a hellish glee. One of the faces was too fast for one of the storm fighters. It descended on him, its horrible mouth wide open, and swallowed him whole. Jets of green from another sandfighter crashed into it not a second afterward, but she was too late to save her comrade. More fighters turned to retreat, and reinforcements hurried forward to cover them. The sound of the storm faded to silence, though the storm and its fighters were still active. The voice spoke again. Ask, mortal. W w what is this place? I stammered. This is reality's edge, mortal. The place where existence itself touches the boundaries of the night. Beyond the edge is where thoughts do not dare to be thought. Where dreams do not dare to be dreamed. It is the harrowing void, the receptacle of darkness that surrounds the bubble of light you call the universe. And... and the faces? I asked. There was a small pause. They are the opposites. The opposites of what? Of you, mortal, you abide within reality, a spark of life connected to ideas, feelings, and choices. They abide without. They are deficits of reality in an already known plane. Anti-beings, if you want a name you can use, it is as good a term as any. Okay, I said nervously. Then, 
Who are those people fighting the, the anti-beings? They are your guardians. There is no single term for all of them that would describe them adequately. They fight on the side of reality against the onrushing darkness. Uh, can you be more specific? No. Do not pursue this inquiry further. I gulped. Okay. Is... Is this place real? As real as the space between the sound of a spoken word and the understanding it produces in your mind. Uh, what? One final question, mortal. Then we must depart. Thinking of questions was not what my mind was particularly disposed to at the time. I struggled to come up with even one relevant question, and the only one I could think of came out. Okay. Why? Why are you showing me this? I am compelled to do so, mortal. As the last syllable of his answer faded, I blinked again, and was back in my laundry room. stiff. I realized I was breathing hard. The visions, or whatever I should call them, are getting more frequent, and they're getting worse. <laughs>